welcome to another episode of Amiga Retro Adventures. Today before you, you see my Amiga 2000 and the Commodore 1942 multi-sync monitor, which is of course starting to yellow a bit, like all these plastics do from the era. And one of the tabs of course broke off on the door here, and of course I lost the door subsequently where it went, I have no idea. But it still functions, mostly. It kind of acts up occasionally, but it still works. So today, what we're going to do is I need to replace part of the video expansion slot since I kind of screwed it up on one of my last projects. So I want to get that back to the, uh, you know, fully functioning condition. I'm not using it, but, you know, I, I want, the, want it replaced just in case I will end up using some kind of video card or scan doubler or something that can plug into the video slot. Um, I'm also going to upgrade the GVP040 combo board that I have, which I think it runs at 33 megahertz from 16 megabytes to 64, which is quite a bit considering this computer, so that'll be kind of nice. And one modification I want to make today as well, so this video might be a bit long, I'm not sure if I'll break it into two parts or not, but I guess you will find out by watching this video. I want to do a one megabyte ROM upgrade on this. I'm a big fan of the newly released uh, 3.1.4 ROMs because it has many bug fixes and I have tried it on my Amiga 500 and the Amiga 1200 and they definitely run, a, it, the OS definitely runs a lot stabler. Now the only thing about that ROM though is it requires more ROM space so the 512 uh, kilobytes that are in these computers, well with all the enhancements and additions, it uh, ran out of room so they had to move the workbench library and then I believe the icon library off of the ROM onto the disk so you will need that installed on the hard drive or access if you boot off of floppies so with going with a one megabyte ROM uh, what I can do is incorporate all of that on the actual ROM itself plus maybe some other little enhancements and uh, that would be great the thing will boot just fine don't have to worry about extra libraries and whatnot because they'll all be in ROM so if you stick with me, you shall see this adventure, because I'm pretty sure it will, and hopefully nothing will burst into flames. So uh, when I return, you should see the innards of my Amiga 2000. So I won't bore you with the disassembly part, since it's pretty basic. And uh, I shall return shortly. And I have returned. As you can see, I have removed the cover. It's like over there. And so basically a quick tour. We have, of course, our floppy drives. I believe one of them, I'm not sure which one, but one of them is a 1.76. I was going to say 1.44, that's PC. 1.76 uh, megabit capacity, and of course, the standard 880. A slot load uh, DVD ROM, which works mostly. It makes some weird noises, but it still functions. And, of course, you have the power supply, which I may upgrade the innards. Eventually, if you buy like an SFX power supply, they're small enough, you can actually put the guts in these and it'll keep the original look. And of course, you'll have a much more reliable and not as old power supply since it will be new. Okay, and over here, you can just see it. This is the, uh, where the CPU card is right here, the, um, what you call it, the GVP 040 combo with the uh, 040, of course, at 33 megahertz. Uh, you can barely see it, but in here, where are we? Okay, right there. Yeah, that's your RAM modules. You'll see the card in its entirety once I remove it. And then we have here the video card, the CyberVision 64, I believe. I think it's the 3D variant, but I don't use it too much for that part. And then we have the network card. And here we have the... Uh, I don't remember the name of these cards anymore. Anyways, I'll put it in the descriptions below or subtitle eventually in the video when I edit it. But this basically uh, converts MP3, Pr Prisma, Megamix, I think? Yeah, pr uh, it basically it's an MP3 decoder. So you can play MP3s um, on the Amiga 2000 because the 040 processor really won't do a very good job of it. And uh, basically with minimal CPU loads, you can play you know MP3s and FLAC and all that fun audio stuff without slowing the computer down to a crawl. So I'm going to remove this whole piece here, as you can see there, and there, yeah, these ones here. So those screws, these three screws all have to come out. 
and um, this whole thing will be removed. If anyone has never taken one of these apart, sorry for the camera, I'm trying to keep it stable. So this whole area, will, the whole chassis will you know, slide out. And then uh, I will join you then, and I'll show you what I plan on doing in this episode. I am back. Um, yeah, I wanted to quickly show you that I forgot not only just the, the front three screws you have to remove, there are the four here that you have to take out as well. And uh, that is that. So I shall remove the uh, chassis and whatever wiring corresponds to it. And then uh, I will be back. Okay, so I have removed it. As you can see, the power supply, the floppy drives, the CD-ROM, all of that is on this chassis here. I had to unplug, of course, the power supply cables and all that fun stuff. And then it will just remove, like so. And I will put this somewhere relatively safe. Oh, one second. And now you can see the motherboard itself. Let me move this camera a bit. Oops. Okay, so I actually have an Indivision ECS sitting right here uh, in, in the Denise socket. So that'll give me um, basically VGA compatible signals for you know LCD monitors or televisions or whatever. And just a ground strap here. This is the part of the video socket I have to replace. You won't be able to see it even if I try to zoom on it, in on it, but I removed one of the pins that are actually, I think the third one, that's actually in the socket. Um, maybe you might be able to. One second here. Okay, let's focus. Maybe, maybe not. You can see it. The third one is missing. So I want to uh, replace the socket. I bought a piece online, of course. It's been used, but it's definitely intact, unlike this one. That way, if I want to, usually what goes in these slots is the. Uh, uh, like scan doubler cards and whatnot. The one that came like standard on the Omega 3000, you can buy similar ones uh, that go in here that give you the VGA output, kind of like what, what this is doing for me. But I, I, do, I just don't want that being, you know, sitting in a broken condition. Because um, this motherboard, as you can see, is in pretty good shape. I have the 3.1 ROM, and I also have the 2 megabyte right here chip frame upgrade. So it's basically the mega chip. So it gives you one, the uh, 1000, sorry, the 1000. The Amiga 2000 has one megabyte of chip RAM, and this adds an additional with the ECS chipset, of course, and one megabyte. And so that gives me two megabytes total, which is pretty much uh, necessary. And this is the 68000, which is pretty much only used to boot the computer because this card here, the uh, GVP68040 or the 040 combo, now you can see all that RAM right there I was talking about, all of those. Um, but that's the, uh, the accelerator card. You can actually get an add-on module to upgrade this to an 060, and I believe you have to change the, you uh, can't see it here, right here, the oscillator crystal as well to uh, get it up to speed. That might be a project for another day. But I'm tending to ramble here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this board, and uh, I shall be back, and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Hello. So here's a quick rundown of the cards that are in this computer. This is the Megamix um, MP3 FLAC decoder. Basically that's the main board and that's the interface. So it's basically your audio inputs and outputs. That way you can actually get the Amiga audio in and out and so you just have one connection of course to your amplifier. And this is the one, this is a, um, I believe it's a 10 100 megabit Ethernet card. I never know how to pronounce this thing. Ariadna 2. I don't know. It's uh, it's right there. So have fun with the pronunciation. Um, you can leave comments below if you want, if you know how it should be uh, phonetically pronounced. But anyways, regardless of what it's called or how you say it, it works. And this is the uh, CyberVision uh, 64 3D, I believe. So it's a 64-bit bus on it. Um, it does come with, uh, well, you can get, which plugs into the header here, um, the scan doubler for it. I did not. Um, have that, but this at least gives me the regular uh, VGA out. VGA out. Now, what's good about if you have that scan doubler card, they go for a pretty penny on eBay. Um, it'll basically switch the Amiga um, output and uh, basically scan double it to come out of its output. So, which means you only have one monitor for native Amiga modes and, of course, the VGA modes. And, of course, the star of the show is the GVP combo board. So, here's the 68040 with the new fan that I put on here. 
crystal oscillator, which I told you before I might have to, if I put this to an 060 upgrade, because there's an add-in board um, that basically drops it down, has a voltage regulator on, regulator on it, drops a voltage down to the 3.3 the 060 needs, it's all on the same card, which is kind of nice, but to run, have it run at 50 megahertz, because I believe this thing is at 16.5, so this doubles it, so 16.5 times 2, you guessed it, is 33, which the uh, 040 is running at. So I would probably have to bump that up to 25 megahertz to get the 060 running at uh, 50 megahertz, but that's for another project. And here's the RAM. There are four four megabyte SIMs, and that of course gives me 16. I bought 16 uh, megabyte SIMs, four of them, so that will give me, in other words, four uh, 16 megabyte SIMs, and that'll give me 64 megabytes. Now, one thing I added to this is this does have a SCSI controller on it, and you can put on a hard drive, obviously, to this bracket, but I, you can't really see it under here. But I have, here we go. This is a SCSI to SD card adapter. SD card is right here. This is version five of the motherboard. I'm not the motherboard. This is version five of the board. Um, version six just came out. I guess it's faster because it does asynchronous, asynchronous, eh, I cannot see that word synchronous transfer rates versus synchronous so apparently you can get like 50 percent plus more speed out of it of course they're a bit expensive at 130 some odd dollars but i'll debate if i'll get that upgraded or not but it works okay i could put like i said a hard drive in here but i have a solid state solution and these here are the uh, terminating resistors as well that's required for scuzzy devices and of course this is the case without anything in it. It's got some rust here. Of course, that's right by where the clock battery was, but I don't think the, uh, I might try to clean it up actually, but I don't think there was much damage on the board. And speaking of which, I'll go over here, and there's the board. This thing is pretty large, yeah, but that was normal back in the day. All computer motherboards were massive. Um, it does have a shield on it. As you can see, so to remove that, of course, I have to take off the jack screws that are along here. And once I have that done, I'll show you what I plan on doing to the board. And with luck, I won't destroy it. So I shall return. Whoa. Once again, returned, I have. I just wanted to show you removing the shield, and it's one of my um, minor pet peeves about these motherboards. Um, you pretty much have to, um, I mentioned there's the jack screws down here. There's also, of course, the jack screws by the mouse and joystick port that have to come off. Um, to get this out, you have to somewhat bend things, and that's what I do not like doing. And if I remember correctly, the easiest side to bend is by here. So I have to get them past these ports. So let me attempt that. If I can get my hands in here. Oh goodness, there we go, and out it comes. Put this gently to the side. As you can see, it somewhat bends that, but of course, uh, a bit of metallurgy, you can bend it back into shape. Of course, it's gonna have to be bent to put it back in, but it's not too bad. There's not much corrosion happening here. I cleaned this up, obviously, before, previously. So I will put that aside as well and bring the motherboard back into frame eventually. There we go. Excellent. Okay. So what I'm going to do, get this moved out of the way, I'll zoom in a bit. Okay. I'm going to unsolder this socket because remember this is the one that's broken, the third pin. I managed to destroy it. Um, I had to remove it because it was bent really bad, so I didn't want it shorting out against anything. Um, I'm also going to do that one megabyte ROM upgrade. So what it does is this socket's got to come out, so I have to desolder it as well as that socket I just mentioned before, um, the edge connector. Um, this is a 40 pin socket. The one megabyte ROMs are 42 pin. So I have to unsolder that and then put in the other socket and I'll show you how that's done. So that'll give me the one megabyte ROM upgrade. With luck, that'll work. And as you can see, this has had the battery modification done. Basically, it replaces the leaky NICAD batteries and it uses a, a lithium battery three volt. 
and uh, they put a diode on it so it doesn't get charged when the power is on so the power only goes one direction because diodes are polarity sensitive so block voltage going one way and allow it going the other and so on so and there's not a, a lot of corrosion around this which is really really good so I'm not sure if something leaked in on the case before where all that rust was but I'll try to take care of that as well and just one final tidbit of information this is a revision 6.2 motherboard which is from what I've read is one of the better boards for the Amiga 2000. So I will uh, remove that socket right here first, see how well that goes, and uh, I'll be right back. Aha! Uh -huh. What is this? Before I started working on the motherboard to remove various parts, sockets and whatnot, I put some vinegar on this rusted section and I'll let it sit while I work on said motherboard and we will see if this vinegar actually removes uh, some of the rust and it looks like it is starting to react a bit with it so time will tell and time we do have so I shall return with an update on this after the motherboard debacle uh, hopefully it's not but you know what I mean I shall be back hello once again so I successfully unsoldered the ROM socket which will make way for the uh, 42 pin versus the 40. I'll show you the modification that has to be done to that before I insert it. And I also successfully removed the edge connector socket. And I will, uh, that's the old one, I will put the new one in its place. So I'm going to solder this one in first off camera and then I will show you on camera how I'm going to wire this up because not just the socket, I have to tie one of the pins to pin 47, I believe, of the CPU for the address line, so it recognizes the one megabyte ROM. Now, the good thing about this uh, modification, uh, you can still use the regular 512K, and then you can use the one megabyte ones because they take up the extra two pins on the top of the socket. So, uh, other than that, I will solder that in, and I will be back with you very shortly. Hello. I have returned. Um, I noticed an anomaly, and this is to be expected on boards this age. You can probably see it right there, pretty much center of frame. Let me cast a bit of a shadow here. Yes, this is actually off the video port, so I'm guessing it's probably the tw uh, 5 volt line. I believe, I don't think 12 goes through there. One or the other, I'm not sure, but they're definitely voltage because it looks like something got plugged in incorrectly. Pretty much opened that copper trace and just to prove that to you that it is definitely broke i will use my continuity tester and there we go okay I'm sure it's still in okay so i believe it goes to this one here to here and as you see there's nothing i got connection here the trace breaks right about there. So if I go from here to, sorry, from here to here, continuity, nothing. So this trace is broken, it's been burnt, high amperage. So something got shorted and uh, basically uh, cooked to that connection. So I will uh, remove the bad trace and just jump her a wire there and that shall restore that. Yes, so that pair repair and um, zoom out a bit and as you can see uh, if I can see and there it is and uh, zoom out a bit more out there we go so that yeah this uh, connection has been soldered in this is the original one like the one I didn't have to touch because you remember in two pieces so that is the one that's been soldered in place and I will turn this over and as you can see um, there it is and everything is honky-dory, as they say. So that is done. So next what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put the socket in here and we shall see how well that goes. I already cleared out, the, there's a little hole here. It's not actually connected to anything, but I think it's plated through. So you gotta make sure you don't wreck it. But I'm gonna run a wire through there, which is gonna connect to I believe pin 41 on this side. So 
or is it 42? I'd probably 41, because that's odd. Yeah. So 41, let's say. So I have the socket here, the new one, as you can see, and I've bent that one. So I have to solder a wire to that and put it through there. So we'll see how well that works. But I will be back shortly to show you the finished product, I hope. Hello. So as you can see before you, I have modified the 42 pin socket for the ROM. And as you can see, there it is there. So it's actually on the right, uh, sorry, <laughs> I always get them mixed up, the left side here. And it's soldered right there, as you can see. The other one is just removed, it's not connected to anything. So what I'm gonna do now is I can run that wire through this hole here, this wire through that hole, and then I'll go to pin 47 on the CPU and then I'll solder everything in. And like I said, once it's in, I'll test it with the regular ROM, it should work. And then I will burn the 3.1.4 uh, one megabyte ROM with uh, all the libraries included on the ROM itself, like I mentioned before, instead of on disk or hard drive. And uh, we'll see how well this works. And uh, I guess I will be right back. And I have returned. So you see, I have completed it. I put the, uh, it's actually a pin 42 that it comes off of through the board here and it connects to pin 47 on the CPU. So this is wired in. When I put it back together again, I'll put the regular ROM in, it should work. And then um, we'll try the uh, one megabyte ROM, the 3.1.4 that I will burn and see if that functions. And as you can also see, I fix the burnt trace. There's not too many things they're gonna plug into that that need voltage, but like I said, it was definitely burnt. So it had to be fixed. So this board seems to be in pretty good shape. So what I'm gonna do now is um, throw it back into the case and uh, we will see what happens. Before I put the motherboard back into this case, uh, you can see you did get rid of the rust, the vinegar that I put on, or at least most of it. Um, it also seemed to take off some of the, uh, I don't know, this weird coating that's on here. So yeah, keep that in mind, but it's still, at least the rust isn't there as much. So the one thing I did notice, there's a stamp in here. This was checked 28th of, sorry, 28th of September, 1991. So that's roughly when this thing was thrown together. So I shall take the board that's over there and put it into here and throw all those cards in. So that will take a bit. I will be back shortly. So I'm almost ready to put the power supply and floppy caddy and all that fun stuff in. Um, as you can see, I have replaced the 16 megabyte modules, which were four by four, 16. These are 16 by four for them, which will give you 64. I had to change jumper 20 according to the manual to accept 16 megabytes of uh, 16 megabyte sims. So we shall see um, if this thing boots up and if it does, um, then we can try the one meg wrong. So hopefully everything will work at this stage. We shall see shortly. I will throw it together and be right back. Hello. And it is mostly together. I haven't put the screws or whatever on the case because eventually I'm going to be putting in the one meg ROM. So we're going to make sure that as is, it works. So one, there's 64 megs of memory because I added that. Um, and to the combo card, this, uh, the, the GVP 040. And that the ROM socket functions properly. At least it's like, you know, works as normal with the regular 512K ROM. So here goes absolutely nothing. I shall turn this on. Monitor, on. Powering, on. Okay. Yeah, 
know, that DVD-ROM sounds horrifying, but it, it works fine. There is a bit of a glitch with this. I don't know why. As you can see, it's kind of stuck. I just have to reboot it because it's just staying at reading for some reason the hard disk. I'm not sure if it's the SCSI 2 SD card adapter it's having minor boot issues with, but that's all I have to do. As you see, it's booting up now. As you can see, um, yes. So just a minor soft reboot and it works. Okay. Drivers loading up. Aha. Uh -huh. So as you can see, it boots and yes, we have, I can zoom in there. If you can even see it, 60 megabytes of memory. So that's 64, obviously it used four to boot up. So I'll do a quick sysinfo here, which I don't have a shortcut for it, so I'll have to do this manually. Utilities and sysinfo. And I have to swap this to the back and we'll see what happens. And there we go. This is the native Amiga output. So yeah, everything looks fine. We still have the uh, 512K ROM. It's version 3.x. It's a cl uh, clone to uh, license ROM. This one needs the uh, workbench library. Um, same idea as the 3.1.4. They ran out of room, so they had to move it to disk. Um, the 3.14, uh, sorry, the 3.1.4 needed more room, and they had to even remove the icon library. So that's what I want to accomplish when I install the uh, one megabyte ROM. Okay, exec is in chip RAM. We can fix that later. Ideally, you want it in fast. Um, there are some remappers. If I remap the um, kickstart to memory, like fast RAM, and it reboots, does all its patches and stuff, um, it will be in fast RAM and it will boot much quicker. So let me check the memory. And there we go, 64 megabytes. I had, sorry, I had 16 before, so that is a definite uh, improvement. And yeah, it's GVP. 32-bit RAM because they have specialized RAM for their cards, which is very hard to find, but this guy's been making some that are compliant um, off of eBay, and the maximum you can put the uh, GVP-040 combo is to 16, sorry, 64 megabytes, which is pretty good. So. so as I can say, we have success. If I can plug that back in again, there we go. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to burn, hopefully, the one megabyte ROM. Um, it's the 27C 800s, I believe, is what's required. And that's uh, it's an eight megabit ROM, which of course you divide that by eight, it's one megabyte of address space of memory, storage, ROM storage, whatever. So that is that pretty much. So I pretty much wraps up this video. Part two will be the burning of the ROM itself and uh, putting it back into the 1000. The 1000. Multiply that by two. The 2000 and seeing if uh, that modification with the socket that I did and the wire going to the CPU address line for a pin 47 um, will actually work. So that'll be part two of the video. Other than that, um, thank you for watching.